I love the original Spyro the Dragon trilogy. The music is fantastic and memorable, the controls are sharp and responsive, the themes for each level are fresh and colorful, the challenges are, well, challenging. The dialogue is witty and it makes me smile. Let me catch my breath and I'll kick that other guy's butt. A thing that sets this apart from other adventure games of its time is the sense of growth you experience as you play through the series. You go from a fledgling of a dragon earning his wings Keep your horns on, Spyro! You have much to learn first! to a more experienced adventurer, gaining abilities, climbing walls, swimming underwater, headbutting obstacles, to a regular dependable hero in the course of three games. If you've seen Eagle Raptor's sequelitis on Mega Man X, and let's not kid ourselves, you have, you know all about how it feels to grow alongside the protagonist of a game. The series itself was refined and built upon from the original to Ripto's Rage, and then again from Ripto's Rage to Year of the Dragon, the latter of which is my favorite game of all time. I even did a J-play on it not too long ago. PLUGGING! That said, this video isn't about Year of the Dragon. Oh no! No. This is about the game after Year of the Dragon. You hear that? Every Spyro fan within 50 light years just went, Oh boy! Here we go again! And the first time I saw this game, I didn't know why. I didn't know why no one spoke about any game after Year of the Dragon. To me, Spyro was the definitive adventure platformer. My cousins had Crash, but I didn't visit them all that often, and I didn't have a Nintendo 64, so that ruled out Mario or Banjo-Kazooie. So that left a pretty little Spyro game for the PS2 sitting on the shelf of a Walmart for $19.99 about 10 or so years ago. Of course, a 12-year-old like me was broke as a joke, so I stuck with what I had, which was Ripto's Rage. And it was great! But again, this isn't Ripto's Rage either, so stop changing the subject, Joiner, and get on with it. Spyro, Enter the Dragonfly. Ooh, Bruce Lee reference, nice. Developed by Check 6 Games and Equinox. Wait, wait a second. Insomniac didn't develop this game? Well, there's a problem right there. Insomniac admitted to running out of ideas for their purple platformer, and they sold the IP to the publisher Universal Interactive. This led to Enter the Dragonfly being the first multi-platform Spyro game, originally going to receive Xbox and even PC ports if it sold well. Which, obviously, it didn't because those ports don't exist. Why is this? Because this game is awful! The story for Enter the Dragonfly takes place a little bit after Year of the Dragon. The sorceress was... The sorceress was drowned in Death Sludge and everyone's celebrating her defeat when, oh hi there, Ripto. Didn't you drown similarly? In lava? You don't typically walk away from that, so why are you still alive? There are two parts of an explanation for this. One, in Year of the Dragon's epilogue, there's a page in which Nasty Nork from the first game and Ripto get together and discuss how to beat Spyro. This implies that he lived through the fight in Ripto's rage anyway. Ah, no, I'm dying! Ah, much better. And two, you should be fucking dead! Because who lives through lava? But nope, Enter the Dragonfly drew from this and he's alive. I'm back, and I'm stronger than ever! Well, way to be so forward about it. Saves us the trouble. But wait, where's... Nasty Nork, wasn't he supposed to be with you? He's not here. Not there. Not anywhere, really, but we'll get into that later. Dragon. You know, you should join me. We would make a great team. But you hate dragons! I hate dragons! It's like the only reason they put that in there is to make sure that the player knows that Ripto's the bad guy, even though that's really redundant coming from the fourth game in the series. Even people picking this up for their first Spyro experience ever will pick up on it, given the context in the rest of the cutscene. You don't need to tell us what we can figure out ourselves. You're not hired for your brains, you dinosaurian land man! Yikes! What is with these model animations? They're off sync, they're over exaggerated even for an E rated game. They look like I'm playing facelift all over again. I should have picked up on it here in hindsight, but me being the hopeless optimist, I was like, oh, it's not that bad, I'm sure it was just a one off. So, Ripto wants to weaken the dragons by stealing one of their energy sources, the dragonflies. Fortunately, he isn't a very good spellcaster, instead, scattering them throughout the dragon realms by accident. Guess what we're doing again? Picking up after people through fetch quests. Yay! That little lizard totally stole all the dragonflies. What did I just get done saying? Fortunately, Sparks isn't too far away. I guess he learned how to teleport like the professor. Bianca then bestows us with one of the worst mechanics in the game. Whoa! What'd you do that for? Drat. That didn't exactly work right. Preaching to the choir, sister. Anyway, what Bianca did was... Oh, uh, um... Excuse me? Loading screen? I was in the middle of an explanation? That, that's, uh, kind of rude. 
What Bianca did was sync us up with the dragon pedestal outside. Every time we bring a rune to the pedestal, it'll give Spyro another elemental breath attack. Sadly, the first rune is... Bubble Breath. Well, that's all well good in concept, considering this is our method of catching the dragonflies. But in practice, this couldn't be further from the truth. Gotcha. Uh-huh. Get over here! Ah! Why can't I catch these damn things? The hitboxes for the bubbles are horrific. The worst hitboxes I think I've ever experienced. I'd tell you where to aim, but I still don't know. And I've beaten the game already. Eventually, you'll find runes for Lightning Breath, which is my preference, and for Ice Breath, which is always a good thing. Or, as good as this game allows. Exploits aside, this is still development of character abilities at this point, which isn't that bad overall. I just wish the Bubble Breath was a little more functional, you know? Speaking of character ability, one thing I picked up right off the bat is the feel of movement. It feels... weird. Clunky runny weird. As if they tried to recreate Insomniac's code from scratch instead of using it. Spyro doesn't jump as high, he climbs things at Mach 5, and when he hovers, you can't press forward for extra momentum like you could in the previous titles. Go ahead, try. The controls in general are slippery. Did I just go straight through a vase? In a game where you need to be at least somewhat precise with your platforming, this is a bad thing because before you know it, you'll slip off a cliff or something. It took the refinements that Ripto's Rage made from the original and went in the opposite direction. Oh hey, it's a challenge portal! I love challenge- Wait, what's this? Why is there a loading screen for a challenge portal? Well, this might as well be waiting the game now. Whoa, they put speedways in the levels! Well, that in itself isn't so bad. Oh look, frame rate issues! Despite this, this is probably one of the most fun parts of the game. I've always been a sucker for speedways. As usual, you've got your time trial challenge and the race against the local champs. It feels like Hunter was intended to be somewhere in this area too, but I could never find him. Oh well. Those ninjas were so embarrassed after being whipped by a dragon that they committed group suicide. Oh wait, never mind. They just dropped a dragonfly as they ran away. So yes, they've been cor- <laughs> Excuse me? Spyro's animations weren't even done loading? How did this even- This- this is the first level! Like I was saying, speedways are a part of the worlds themselves now. I'm not sure why, but that is one of the three types of challenges in this game. The others being platforming and... vehicles. Need I ask why there is a tank sub-level in a world called Dragonfly Dojo? For comparison, in Year of the Dragon's Cloud Spires, the entire level revolves around the theme of weather. There's an egg stuck in the cloud generator, you need to make a new sun with your flame breath, and wake up the giant rain cloud by flaming the evil spirits. Enter the Dragonfly doesn't do that because apparently they decided martial arts wasn't enough and decided to park a panzer in the back parking lot. Just in case. Alright, I've made some considerable progress in this world, so that must be the home portal. Or... Is it another challenge portal? I can't tell, they look so similar! This gets to be another issue later on. In Year of the Dragon, the challenge portals are dark and you can easily tell them apart from the home portals. Fortunately for me, this is actually the home portal, though it is very easy to mix them up later as the immersion factor is not at all there because LOADING SCREENS! Woohoo! So the next world is the token UFO invasion world. Never thought I'd say that. And can I take two steps without slowdown? The answer is no. This level in particular seems to suffer from the larger level than the others, relatively little to show problem. Look at how much space there is! Even if each level has more gems on average per level than the previous games, it's still terribly empty quite often. This game only has 8 worlds in it, not counting the one hub world. It's like it's trying to be Shadow of the Colossus or something. You son of a bitch. Okay, so this level is done too. Occasionally, I like to check up on my progress, so let's crack open the atlas. Uh... What? What is this? What is this? You could warp to any level you've been in. I'm not even 15% done with the game and I can warp between levels. <laughs> See this? This screams beta test. This isn't an ability you should have in a Spyro game before even beating it, much less getting halfway through. Instead of wasting time finding the home portal, I could just use the Atlas to warp wherever I wanted to. But even that doesn't save much time because loading screens! Have I made my point yet? Maybe I want to go talk to Bartholomew for a second. But I can't, because the game locks my controls after I hit the Y button, and the only way to get around it is to exit the level and come back, which means even more loading screens!
Eventually, and that's that's if you're not sick of waiting by now, you'll have gathered enough of the dragonflies to go and confront Ripto, the first boss. It isn't even a boss fight as much as it is an overview of the elements you've acquired. Pocus, pocus. Uh, just, just skip this. I don't even wanna. But I'll be back, and, and I'm stronger, stronger than, than ever. ever. That's it. That's it. No ending sequence. No snarky one-liner from Spyro. Nothing. Nothing. Just nothing. Nothing! So that's Enter the Dragonfly. Jesus, I really, really don't want to play through this game any more than ever again. Even the credits don't want to sit through the credits. The controls are unrefined, again. The hitboxes are wonky, the music doesn't stand out, Bianca, Nasty Nork, and Moneybags all put together have a combined total of two appearances. The vehicles suck, except for the airplane, that was pretty cool. The dialogue isn't very good, the pacing is awful. Ripto's the only boss fight in the entire game, there's around 700 instances of loading screens, and it doesn't even really feel so much like a game as it does several chores in a row, which you have to slog through all of to get the rematch that you have to fight in order to get the only ending. Is this a bad game? Is calling it a bad game an understatement? No. You gotta be fucking kidding me! Now hold on, I know what you're thinking. You just listed a number of things wrong with this game. How could you say it's not bad? Well, that's simply because I don't see it that way. You some sort of masochist? Most of the things I pointed out in this game were due to Universal rushing the development teams to sell on the winter of 2002. This is something you should never, ever do under any circumstances. That'll pretty damn near guarantee a failed product and a colossal waste of time and money. The way I see it, delays aren't a very good alternative, and they'll still make people upset, but it is still a much better option in the long run, because then you'll actually get to finish the project you started and people will be much happier for it, even going so far as to state it was worth the wait. Not you, Ubisoft. You know what you did. So no, this isn't a bad game, but an incomplete game, a poor practice of gaming development that put both Check 6 and Equinox out of business. Another good example of this is Sonic 06, which was rushed to celebrate Sonic's 15th anniversary, and which, as we all know, ended up as one of the worst Sonic games to date. Personally, I have to say that they're incomplete and not bad games, because to me, Saying that they're games at all implies that they are complete, quality tested, and ready to sell even, all of which they're not. Clearly. If you want my opinion on a bad game, Love 30. At any rate, this has been The Joiner, and now you know why I won't do a playthrough of Spyro Enter the Dragonfly. Thank you all for watching. If you like this and want to see more, go ahead and leave a thumbs up. It lets me know how I did. After that, you're Free to go about your life, I suppose. I don't really have anything left to say. If you're gonna buy a Spyro game with Ripto in it, make sure it's Ripto's Rage. It's much better. Hell, anything's better than this. Even Attack of the Rhinox. Ooh. Zing! Grass! <laughs> I can't even do it anymore! Bianca then bestows that big Huh? Distows. She takes it away from us. Bianca then bestows the bus. Pus, 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 pus? Why can I not say those two words together?